Hello and welcome to the Best Places to Work Awards sessions. As part of the Best Place to Work Awards, we've been running panels, podcasts, interviews and articles designed to help studios become a better place to work, covering topics such as diversity and inclusivity, mental health and well-being, management. And today we're going to be talking about our responsibility when it comes to the environment and climate change. And we have a panel of real experts with us today to give their advice and share what they have been doing. So welcome, everybody. Hello. 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 Um, well, let's start with with intros, um, but, 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 but not just intros. Tell us who you are in your organ organisation for a green lens. So tell us about the green journey each of you have sort of been on. Shall we start with Michael? Cool. Hello there. Uh, I'm the uh, head of games at Games London. Um, we uh, early this year we co-published with Yuki the something called the Green Games Guide. So it's just I'll just talk really quickly about our what we've been doing in green stuff. Um, we published that during the London Games Festival, which is one of the events, which is one of the a big major event we run. And I think sustainability had been on our mind because that's a big event and it has you know it consumes a lot of energy in so many ways so there's, there's, there's that was part of the thinking um games london is part of film london as well we're um, the screen agency for london and they've been doing a lot of work about you know they've been pushing for facilitating lots of innovation in like green green energy use and film production and stuff so for us as games london and there's only two of us in the team it was this thing of under of seeing that there was a lot going on knowing we had to be more responsible, and then also finding ways to tell people about that in through the guide we published every year. Oh, very nice. Um, and Jane, if I'm working up from the bottom. I don't know if this is how everyone's going to be viewing it, but uh, but Jane. Sure, uh, I'm Jane. Um, I'm the studio operations lead at Us Two Games. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'll tell you a bit about our journey. Um, so didn't start all that long ago I guess in the last sort of year and a half is when we've been most active in this space um, predominantly started with um, us joining the B Corp movement so becoming a B Corporation uh, part of that means you have to um, sort of adhere to certain um, commitments and sort of sustain sustainability commitments so that kind of kick-started us on the journey um, and then pre-pandemic and during pandemic we were creating a game called Albra Wildlife Adventure um, which is a story that is telling um, it's a game that's telling a story about the importance of protecting nature and wildlife um, and so we wanted to be really authentic about the story that we were telling and kind of really lean into the messaging um, of Alba um, and the message that Alba was putting out in the world um, and so we wanted to uh, really try and use our platform as games creators and with the the game and the message that we were putting out there to make a difference in the world and create some real environmental impact. And we followed up on that by doing a tree planting campaign. So we're planting a tree for every copy of Alba that is um, sold or downloaded. Um, and we've been trying to activate um, our player base as well. Um, so yeah, and I guess follow up things of that is that we've kind of continued that story, continued that journey, and we're trying to do more um, as a studio to be more sustainable and to continue to commit to put to bring green messaging into the games that we make wow amazing and that's over the last 18 months um okay and uh, miles thanks chris hello everyone um my name is miles jacobson i'm studio director at sports interactive and um, we make a series of games called football manager um and we've been on the journey for for quite a long time i think we're uh, we're best known in this space for the work we've done packaging wise recently where we've got rid of um we've got rid of those plastic dvd cases basically for uh, for our packaging and switched to packaging which is 100 percent recycled and recyclable um, you can literally take the disc out and put the rest of the packaging into your curbside recycling bin at home and send the disc off somewhere specialist although um it's going to be no disc this year um, so we're getting rid of that component as well with, with what we're doing. Um, but we, we've actually had a bit of a history in this space because we, uh, I don't know if, if people watching this or if people on the panel remember this, but there was a time where PC game boxes were these huge things, these huge cardboard things, and it wasn't friendly cardboard, it wasn't recycled cardboard. Um, and we were the first game to switch from those huge boxes to... Uh, to the same packaging that PlayStation was using at the time, basically, which was the DVD cases. Um, and we remember, uh, I remember at that, at that point, um, one very major high street retailer 
turned around and said, well, we're not going to take your game unless you pay for us to re-wrap all of our stores. Um, at which point we went, well, then don't take our game and we'll just put on the adverts that the game isn't available in your stores, which quickly got them to change their mind. So, so we've been on that side for a long time. We're based in the Here East um, in Stratford, which is part of the Olympic regeneration and very proud that our office is, um, is greener than a lot as well. It's 100% green energy inside the studio. Um, and we've got a couple of future projects that we're working on because I don't think, and I, I, I'm sure that Deborah and Jane and, and Michael will agree with this, none of us are doing enough in this space. We're all doing stuff at the moment and it's all good, but none of us are doing enough. So our next stage is to look at our digital footprint as well. Um, are there assets that we're supplying with our games that only people with certain configurations of computer or console can actually use? And if that is the case, why are we insisting that everyone is downloading everything? Um, so that's our next mission. And we also have a, a project that we're working on with War Child, um, charity that we've worked with for a long time in Sef Central African Republic of um, actually building a, a mango forest um, which is good for the environment, but also going to be good for a couple of the local villages that used to be at war with one another, um, working together, to, and they will own all of the fruit that comes off, which they can either eat or sell. So trying to hit a few different touch points at the same time, but that's something that um, we're going to start on that uh, either later this year or early next year. Um, the recent government funding cuts uh, to foreign aid haven't helped that project um, and we'll be looking to roll that out and encouraging others to do the same in a couple of years time once that trial is finished. Wow, lots. Um, well, thanks, Miles. I will come back to the packaging in a moment. Um, and um, Deborah. Hi, uh, I'm Deb. I know everyone on this panel, which is lovely. So I am wearing my Playing for the Planet hat today um and so i'm re representing um that and playing for the planet for anybody who doesn't know is a unit facilitated um organization which these lovely people are actually members of so it's a mixture of studios um storefronts and uh, trade bodies now as well who have become associate members who've all basically come together to try to tackle uh, their footprint together so um, we now have 32 different uh, members um, you know, all different studios from Microsoft and Sony, um, also trade associations, like I said before, like Yuki and uh, Game London is a part of it as well. And of course, us two and Sports Interactive. And uh, to join the Alliance, different studios make commitments about their environmental goals and their footprints and commit to reducing their environmental impact. And then um, as part of the Alliance, we Kind of bring everyone together we share learnings um, we also keep track of people's progress to make sure that they're actually doing what they say that they have committed to do um, and out of that uh, playing for the planet also came uh, this initiative called the green game jam uh, which um, jane and us two also participated in this year um, where basically the i guess the alliance is working on multiple fronts so one is around you know how can you make your business greener how can you uh, make that impact, but then also how can you use your influence within um, the games that you make and the billions of players that you reach to actually try to nudge their behaviors in in uh, interesting ways as well. So that's what the Game Jam is about. Amazing. Well, yeah. Miles, Jane, Michael, how have you found working? How have you found playing playing for the planet? And, you know, has it been useful to you? Has it been has it uh, for you to be part of or, or refer to? I mean, from my perspective, you've got it, it's the first committee that I've ever been on outside of being on the, the Yuki board for a few years where Sony, Microsoft and Nintendo um, and Google actually as well, who aren't, who aren't on the, the Yuki board, have all been a part of this and all talking together and sharing information. Um, plus mobile companies from around the world, companies from China, other studios from the UK, um, huge global corporations all sitting in one room with mutual respect for one another and giving each other ideas um, and uh, some people demanding that people are doing more and and others um, being a little bit more corporate about it but it's it's a, a great group that's been put together by the UN Environment Agency um, based out in Kenya um, 
and yeah have, have brought basically a load of like-minded people together to work together and you've got brilliant initiatives like the green game jam that that deb um has put on that lots of different people get involved with um but you know we've we've seen other people adopting our packaging off the back of being our packaging idea off the back of being in um in playing for the planet so it's it it's brilliant being part of an organization that we're all trying to outdo each other the whole time <laughs> i think as well with what we're doing and then just freely sharing all of the information on on how we've done it um to get other people to try and do the same yeah um, i can i can very much echo what miles is saying there like obviously coming into this space fairly new this year or, or trying to be more active in this space um we, we were i guess beginners so we definitely wanted to surround ourselves with people who are in the same position uh people who could provide some of the expertise or help help us to learn on this journey basically and very much you know i, I remember my first sort of couple of meetings with playing for the planet and i was like oh i don't know a lot of this stuff but you know how far are we now? like 10 months down the line uh, you know, I can really look back and reflect on how much I've learned as a as an individual, how much we've been able to participate in as a as a company, um, and you know, play the the platform that the UN has, the Playing for the Planet has, to be able to kind of put us in front of different audiences, different events, um, different pieces of media. It's it's been you know really great for just general reach and kind of understanding that we're able to perhaps have a bigger bigger impact by being part of something um, as a collective. Um, yeah, and I guess the other the other side of it that's um, really effective for us is that, you know, um, joining up um, as part of the Alliance, you make pledges, as Deborah was mentioning, um, to, you know, make commitments to reduce your carbon footprint and be quite ambitious with those as well. And being part of the Alliance also helps keep us accountable for that because we're constantly talking about these things. Um, you know, we've got reference points to hear how other studios are getting on with some of these same challenges. And it's inspiring as well because we're learning about some of the kind of advances that we're making in the industry that perhaps we wouldn't have known about if we weren't part of this Alliance. Um, so yeah, it's been a really eye-opening experience. Yeah, and I mean, you know, echoing that, I think um, I think Playing for Planet is a really interesting kind of kind of thing in itself because it's 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 done a lot in such a short amount of time to inspire so much action. And I think you know, obviously, part of that is because the climate challenge, however you describe it, is is pretty urgent. But also, I think it's just you know, Deb's approach, Sam's approach, or everyone there that they're, they're they're quite you know, like Jane says, they've encouraged everyone to set quite high targets. And when we've asked things of them they've come back with with other you know sort of provocative ways to make us as an organization act so you know that's been it's been it's really useful to have somebody like that that's prepared to push people forward right and then um I, you know just the other thing i don't think we've mentioned it is the the kind of that focus on mobilizing our audience base through things like the green games jam putting messages into games isn't you know i spoke to some film and tv colleagues once who are very skeptical because they were like you know people putting their bins out on tv isn't necessarily going to make people do the recycling more but that, but we talk so much in the game sector about our you know a very engaged passionate audience playing for the planet kind of makes us holds us to account in that sense because in terms of like using that audience for good so that's you know that's, that's just it's all been really positive oh brilliant well how do people get involved deborah how does how does it if there's anyone watching who wants to Great question. So we have uh, a couple of onboarding moments throughout the year. And if uh, there are different companies that want to join, um, then you can actually head to the website, which is just playingfortheplanet.org. And there will be a way uh, that you can just go in and say, you know, I'd like to join as a member, which will then um, reach out to Siri, who uh, also works within Playing for the Planet, who is lovely. And then she'll come back with information for you on when the next onboarding moment is, and then what the different sort of requirements are to try to join. Um, it, it does include a commitment letter, for example, like we talked about, but it's not like, you know, you'll send in your letter and then we either accept it or reject it. Like the Alliance will help shape that letter and make sure that it gets to the place that it needs to be um, if people are really interested in becoming members. Um, so that's the, the best way to, to go about it. But um, the Green Game Jam is actually um, so an Alliance initiative, but studios that have not yet joined the Alliance can also participate. Um, so that's another great way for studios to sort of get their feet wet, see what it's all about, um, really get to know other members of the Alliance and see the work that they're doing um, without maybe if they're not quite ready to make that step yet. It's a nice sort of entry point. And we do find that most people who take part in the jam then also join the Alliance. Oh, brilliant. Okay, well, there we are. Um, well, 
let's talk about some of the things that you've been doing. Um, and I'll start with um, Miles because you've mentioned it a couple of times already, the, the environmentally uh, 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 sound packaging. Um, what's been the greatest challenge in sort of making that happen? And what can um, other studios learn from it? Shrink wrap. Shrink wrap is by far and away the biggest challenge that we had. Finding shrink wrap that was recycled and could be recycled afterwards. Um, it's the the lengths that um, that Sega's Optine, um, massive shout out to Natalie over there, went to to find um, to find this was was huge, and it was a a, a big breakthrough moment. When we actually did it did push the cost of the packaging up a little bit um thankfully we have a very supportive parent company in sega so the cost of our packaging went up by 22 euro cents by switching from our old packaging to the new packaging as more people adopt it the price will start coming down because um a lot of the parts that we've used will become cheaper when they're being uh, produced in more mass for uh, for what we're doing so so that was a challenge. Also, the right ink, trying to find inks that would still look vibrant on the packaging when you don't have a, a full plastic surround as you have with, with DVD packaging and trying to make those eco-friendly. Um, and one of the, the things that we used to say when we first rolled out the packaging is if you're a vegan, you can actually eat it because the inks are made out of vegetables. Um, so... So those, those were probably the biggest challenges. I think when, when we first did a packaging switch back in the 90s, the biggest challenge was retail. Um, I, I mentioned that, that story earlier, but a lot of the retailers were very sceptical. And there were concerns when we were rolling out the packaging that retail would be sceptical again. And they actually weren't. They really embraced the idea, um, partly because the shipping was cheaper. So often with retailers, if you're if you're dealing with the the large uh, the larger retailers, all the stock goes into a warehouse and then it goes out to the individual stores. Because our packaging, um, although the dimensions are the same, it's a lot lighter. So you can actually fit 32 into a box rather than 25, and then it's lighter to ship out. So the retailers appreciated that it was going to be cheaper for them to. Um, cheaper for them to be able to send it out to the shops, but that also had a benefit for the planet as well, because the lighter a load is, the less fuel that gets used by the, the truck that's going out there and delivering it as well. So, um, but you know, the, the gauntlet was very much laid down by us that we wanted to get rid of plastics in our, in our packaging entirely. And we managed to do that to a very large degree. There's still obviously plastic in the disc, um, although we've got rid of the discs now and there's plastic on the shrink wrap which is needed because if you don't have shrink wrap unfortunately people walk into game retailers and take the disc out of the packaging and leave the store so you have to protect it in some way um but yeah i think the challenges for for the larger companies is probably the cost of switching um because when you're when you're dealing with a a huge corporation they're trying to get costs down the whole time rather than the costs going up but um but sega sega both in europe and japan have been incredibly supportive of that and it's it's always nice for a sega europe initiative to get a nod in the sega sammy holdings uh end of year report and that was something that they that they highlighted um as being a, a big positive for them so um so that was great um we were slightly concerned about the consumers as well because a lot of our consumers collect our games and they buy each year and they're there sitting on a shelf so we made sure that the spine dimensions were identical to the spine dimensions to our previous games so that when you do put it on a shelf it just looks like a continuation even though the packaging is different there wow lots of work went into that then <laughs> It, it was a lot of work and, and you know i gave natalie some props i need to give tim breach at sega props as well they uh, they really went into this project it was one of those times where i was asked what do you want to see us doing with the packaging this year and every year i go more recycled this year i went completely recycled completely recyclable and they took that as a challenge and kept us in the loop every single step of the way with what they were doing um to be able to to get to 
to where we got to, which is um, which is a great step. Brilliant. Okay. Well, uh, Jane, um, you mentioned Alba um, and about sort of it's sort of the fact that environmental issues uh, issues issues are at the heart of that. Um, has it has it mobilised players? Is it, is it, is it has it succeeded in its mission? Yes, definitely. Um, so, yeah, I guess you know this game is all about nature, all about the environment, and we really want to lean into the message that we're putting into that, and also you know making sure that it was an effective message that was going out into the world. And you know we were concerned during development. Um, you know, how do we make sure that this is accurate? How do we make sure that what we're putting out there is giving the right message? So that was something that um, you know we were quite keen on during development, making sure that we were kind of reaching out to experts to help us um, make sure that the message in the game, you know, felt true to true to the issues that we were describing. And we did that through um, speaking to some science communicators at the Natural History Museum who played the game for us, kind of vigorously kind of tested us on some of the, the themes that were in there, but ultimately gave us the message that um, touching lightly on these topics is always going to be a good thing. Um, you don't need to provide um, you know, all of the information in the same place, um, because you're just going to lose the interest of your players in that moment. So, um, yeah, they, they very much kind of, um, agreed that our themes were, were suitable and were going to help us in kind of communicating this sustainability issue throughout the game. So that gave us kind of a thumbs up and the confidence in, in the message that we were putting out there, I guess, um, them and, and some other experts that we work with. So that was um, a really useful and helpful um, part of development was kind of making sure that we had this outside of view coming in um, to what we were putting out there. And then I guess around um, um, mobilizing our players, obviously this is something we really wanted to achieve with Alba, you know, as Alba, you are making a difference in the world, you are um, helping to fix things, helping to activate a community. And we wanted our players to feel very much inspired by Alba and to feel like they could also make a difference in the real world. So they could be more like Alba outside of the game. Um, and so as this was more or less our first first kind of game really kind of harnessing um this message and you know trying to mobilize our players we, we tried quite a few things <laughs> so probably too many things in, in hindsight but um so you know we were working with experts and we, we were kind of thinking like we want to make we want to make a platform we want to have a platform that we can kind of direct our players to after the game so that they they have a real space where they've got you know real actions that they can take and they can see the actions of other players. So we partnered with a, um, a pledge campaign called Counter Sin, which um, has 16 simple steps, very similar to what Alba does in the game, things like recycling, um, uh, waste less, um, you know, lots of actionable um, things that are small habits that people can change in their real life. So we, um, through our social media after the launch of the game, we were very much driving our players to take a pledge to make a real life um, step um, using our counter sim platform which was all branded as Alba um, and you know kind of with the goal of having sort of an aggregated Alba community to see like the ultimate carbon savings that we were able to achieve through our players so that was one thing we did um, I mentioned about the natural history museum um, science communicators who were helping us with the themes and making sure that what we're putting out there was suitable for public consumption they suggested touching lightly on these themes is great but it'd be really good to have a place where if players want to learn more about these topics that there's resources available at the end of the game in the credits as a link out um, so that's something we did we put some like calls calls to action in our credits saying like these are some um these are some companies and organizations that you can uh, that you can visit and you can learn more about these topics around biodiversity and sustainability. So that was really cool. Um, and I guess the biggest thing that mobilized our players, and I think probably after all trying all these other things with the, was the biggest success for us was the tree planting campaign, um, which was planting one tree for every copy of the games sold or downloaded. And we think ultimately the simplicity of this this campaign was what made it so impactful. Um, it was, yeah, simple message. Um, it was measurable, it was visible, the player has instantly created impact through buying the game, so they instantly feel good, they instantly have a sense of like, great, I've actually contributed to something um, genuinely helping the real world, I can go on the platform, I can see that there's a tree there that's that's been added because I've bought this game. Um, and yeah, ultimately, that was the message that really carried like through media, like when um, people were re reviewing the game. Um, so yeah, that was, I guess, the biggest part of Alba that felt very impactful and felt like it was um, 
I guess, mobilizing our players the most. So yeah, I guess trying a lot of things, but ultimately the thing with the simplest message was the one that people held on to the most. Brilliant. How, how, did you have to work with a, uh, I guess you had to work with a tree planting organization to do that? Yeah, so we partnered with um, a very cool company called Ecology. Um, and yeah. yeah, we chose them because they've just got a lovely platform and it's really, um, easy to kind of see and measure like how many trees are in the forest you can see the impact of where they're being planted they take you to um, google maps views of exactly where the forests are so you can see real um, uh, like live photos of the forest being planted wow. and the projects we chose to support were um, mangrove forests in madagascar and predominantly that was because those particular projects are focusing on um uh, re-establishing biodiversity through the mangrove forest trees and roots um, so that kind of felt the most ALBA uh, related project but yeah it's it's a really great platform so and it really helps people to see the impact that ALBA has been able to achieve. Oh amazing brilliant well that sounds fantastic well and and, and Michael you uh, Games London you, you co-published the Green Games Guide um, uh, earlier this year so what how was the reaction been to that I mean how, how did that come to be to tell us about that? Yeah, so actually, it, it, it also it actually started um, from one of those provocative things that some of the planet for the planet said when I had as festival director just asked someone there to come and speak, and it was Sam Barrett who who everyone on this group knows and Deb works with, and he said he was like, why should I just come and speak at your festival? What are you doing to like make London games companies do better? And it was quite a, like, oh yeah, fair point. And so we we had, we had were aware of all these other things going on, but but kind of also appreciated that the information that it hadn't really been shared, shared much. We surveyed a bunch of studios and the, the overwhelming answer was that, you know, if, if they were small businesses, they felt they weren't um, able to make any impact on the environment, that they just sort of just also didn't feel informed. So, um, and I think the other thing to mention, but you know, is is that we were uh, there's a lot of stories that haven't had much airtime of things that have gone on behind the scenes. Like you know, um, Miles mentioned Sony earlier on being quite active in playing for the planet. They've done a lot of work on measuring and reporting on how the devices work, and that, you know that's in our guide. And and all the format holders have worked together on. Um, uh, I forget the name of it. There's there's a, there's kind of a, a group, and they publish their minutes on the work they've done understanding the energy consumption of all their devices. So you know this has been on the. It, it's all happening at once, and there's not much information. So we were just like, let's try to collect this together, and create something that people can again immediately look at and, and then act off of. So um, we put it out in April. That the um, the response has been really good. We've hosted events off the back of it since. Of people that have downloaded it and wanted to learn more or you know people that have spoke um, people that have written for that guide and to, to explain how they did it you know they, space apes a great example they're like a you know a poster child of taking this stuff internally in their business and completely reducing their carbon footprint and then telling everyone else how to do it which is the really important part is all about this um, you know communicating it back to everyone um so yeah it's, it's 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 been it's been a really great journey for us and we've learned about it and then now so if anyone if smaller businesses say to us i don't get this me and my team can say well we we can kind of fill you in or point you in the right direction because that's where a lot of the a lot of the smaller companies probably found problems um you know the playing for the planet has a lot of the big companies involved but from my where i sit in london it's mostly small businesses making games so that so that's where the help helps needed it's um, yeah, yeah really useful Small companies are often focused on surviving a lot of the time rather than thinking about the other things. But I think they don't realise there are things they can do quite easily. Exactly. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. One thing uh, on that, Chris, as well, is if we don't sort this out, then the smaller companies aren't going to survive because there yeah. won't be any customers for them to be selling games to. You know, this this is a climate emergency. This isn't this isn't something we're just doing to feel better about things. Yeah. A lot of work mm. that needs to be done and you know, games, we make, we all make games that entertain people, right? All of us in the industry make games to entertain people, but it does all use energy. It uses power and we have to cut back on all of that. So it's our responsibility to be doing things to make sure that we're not making that situation worse, that we're actually making that situation better. Hmm. The um, the Green Games Guide is, what will be, there'll be links to it. And if you're watching this on the website, there'll be a link in the story. If you're watching this on youtube there's a link in the youtube thing if you're watching it on the podcast there's a link in the podcast so if you want to download it and find more uh, more information or read it it's all it's it's there um well i guess this is for all of you as well aside from the products um you're, you're producing and releasing out there how are each of you how are how are your organizations putting green issues on the agenda internally 
is, is that been easy? Has that been hard? Who wants to go? Shall I go? Yeah. I'll jump in there. <laughs> um, for us, it's been very easy to bring it um, to the kind of forefront of our agenda. Um, you know, we're a small company. Um, I would say everyone in the company is really passionate about um, being more impactful in this area. Um, to be honest, it's also been something that's like really helped us to stay connected during remote working across the pandemic. It's been like a kind of core uh, thing that has rallied everyone in the company and everyone's been really proud. Obviously, everyone's really proud of what Alba's been able to achieve, but kind of escalating that and kind of doing more as a company has been something that's, that's made everyone um, feel really a part of kind of what we're trying to do and trying to achieve. So that's been really great. Um, yeah, so I guess like, Aside from Alba, um, as a company, I'll do a little call out. We're also following the Green Game Guide. It's been really, really useful. Um, you know, um, you called out the, the Space Ape um, Games doing their sort of teachings and learnings of their, how they've been able to um, really reduce their comfort. But that's been so helpful to me. I'm the one kind of looking after um, our uh, uh, carbon footprint stuff, measuring it understanding what we can do to make a difference and um, what we can reduce. Um, so yeah, there's been so many, um, you know, really great resources out there just within the industry to kind of help with some of those things like, like understanding your footprint better. Um, yeah. Other things we've been doing, we um, offset our workforce as well. So we offset, um, you know, not that we necessarily need it right now because most people are remote, but it offsets things like people's commutes, people's energy use. Um, we do also do that through our ecology platform as well. They do different offsetting solutions. So that's just something we've we chose to do a while back on the side, um, and that has been something that people have been really happy to see as well. Um, but yeah, and then I guess further work we're doing around bringing green messaging into existing games we took part in the green game jam as deb mentioned earlier um and we're working on some new content for one of our um existing games called monument valley 2 um we're bringing some new content to that it's never had any um dlc or any extra content since it was released in 2017 so a that's really exciting that we're bringing some new stuff to that game but also that it's going to be focused around conservation of trees and we'll hopefully mobilize more of our players and get people to um sort of join in the um in the petition that we're going to be um, supporting, which is called Play for Forests, um, through that piece of content. So yeah, lots of exciting stuff. But as I say, it's been something that has really sort of rallied the whole company together. And it's something that we're, yeah, all kind of united in this message and, you know, all kind of joining forces to help make a difference. Wow, brilliant. I think, I guess I can uh, speak from like the organization standpoint as well, because I still work with Space Ape as well on all of their green stuff. And I think, we were super lucky at Space 8 because our CEO was actually just really switched on when it came to climate and green initiatives. And one day he just stood up and said, you know what, we're going to go carbon neutral because he just thought it was important. And not every company gets gets that or has that luxury where, you know, their leader will just stand up and say, we're going to do this. Like often it has to come from uh, employees or other people who are really passionate about it until it reaches leadership. So I think that was um, great within Space Aid. But I would also say that, you know, like Jane said, there are lots of resources out there now. And I think the best thing that people can do is really like share their process and share what's working for them and share what's not, because it can be super intimidating and overwhelming just to even start. And you're kind of worried if you're doing things correctly or are you measuring things correctly or what about the projects that I'm picking are they saying what they are they doing what they say they're going to do you know are they legitimate and um so rather than worrying about where you're going to go wrong I think it's yeah just a great way just to to start and then you're going to iterate on the process and make it better and every year I think everybody you know whether within the alliance or within that ecosystem is is like leveling up and getting better collectively and so as we all go on that journey together, we're able to help each other. So I think that's great. You know, green energy is um, so easy to switch to nowadays, whether you're at home or whether you're at work. So encouraging people, most of the industry are still working at home at the moment, encouraging people to switch at home. Um, it took me less than two minutes to switch to, to Bulb, who are my energy supplier now at, at home and um, in the office. Uh, here east which is pretty well known for for being as green as they possibly can be there are more recycling bins there than there are normal bins um, there's a shuttle bus that goes from the station 
Um, and one of the things that, that excited us about going to Here East is actually the amount of parking there is for bikes. Um, and we have a ride to work scheme where you can get a discount on getting a bicycle. Being based in London as we are, a lot of the team um, live in the London area. Um, one of the, the things that the, the industry has also em embraced both before the pandemic and even more by the looks of things post pandemic is more people working from home um, more regularly. I think we, we adjusted much better than the other creative industries to the possibility of being able to work from home. And that is also going to be a good thing because the less traveling we do, um, the better really um, when it comes to that side of things, unless you, unless you are cycling in. So the freedom that we have at, at an industry, and we certainly have a, a, a SI have done for a long time, of you know, come into the office if you need to, um, but if you don't want to come into the office, you don't have to come into the office. That does all feed into um, the the savings that that we all need to do personally and and in our businesses. So. Um, so there are, there are lots of positive things that we can do really easily away from the core development side, just on the operation side, which I know is an area that Jane's very passionate about um, as well. Switch your energy supplier um, because server rooms use a lot of energy, right? And, and when we're all working from home, the server rooms tend to be going overdrive as people are remote desktoping in or using VPN to get things from Perforce and and Helix and, and Jira being an online system. Um, so it's kind of important that we're looking at what we do as an industry for people at home, as well as what we're doing in the office. Um, and, and yeah, just encouraging, encouraging people that if they're gonna drive, at least use an electric car, um, but cycle if possible, because that keeps you fit too. That's great. Brilliant, Miles. Um, well, so that, that's internally, um, but obviously the climate crisis is urgent, Miles made it very clear. Do you feel that that message is being heard across the games industry? Um, what's been the reaction to, to other, to your peers in terms of, in terms of what you're doing and, and, and so on? I've, I've actually been amazed by how open the members of players of uh, playing for the planet um, have been to all the initiatives that, that people have been doing, how supportive it's been as a network as well, um, rather than, you tend to get a lot of jealousy in the creative industries. We don't really have that in the games industry nearly as much. Like someone comes up with a good idea, they share it, other people can utilize that as well, um, which has been really important. So as a, as a sector, I think we're doing a lot better than most. Um, the film industry are actually doing a lot as well. And, and um, you know, film and TV production with uh, with Alberts, you see their logo at the, the end of loads of TV shows. And I just thought they were the biggest, you know, the busiest production company in the world. And no, when you see an Albert sustainable production at the end of a, a TV show, it's, they've, they've been through various processes to make sure they're doing things greener. Um, but obviously for some businesses, it's harder. Some businesses are, are relying on, on polluting. Um, and, you know, they, the message certainly isn't getting across to us, but uh, uh, getting across to them. I think um, from our perspective, we're a young industry um, and therefore we're, I'd like to think that as an industry, we're more thoughtful about these things, you know, whether that be in the UK with Games Aid being set up as the umbrella group, whether that be um, the various mental health initiatives that we've had um, across the industry over the last few years. Um, we tend to be thinking about this stuff uh, a lot more than most, um, which is good, but we're still not doing enough. And I don't think anyone who's involved with playing for the planet would say that they're doing enough. I don't think that there are you know, any companies in the industry that think we're doing enough in, in any of the, whether it be a CSR initiative uh, to, to use the corporate names for them, um, none of us are doing enough and none of us ever can do enough. Um, but we're still doing a lot more than most industries 
I believe anyway. Yeah, I, I, agree, I agree with that. And I think, um, you know, from I saying the reaction to it, to the guide and then us having explained to the people on this panel and other organisations, you know, the, I think the industry is taking this, taking this really seriously. And I also think the, what's also interesting is, you know, we, we know that games aren't like, you know, they're, they're not the worst pastime for the environment as well. So there's also this, there's this potential where we can get to a point to talk about games as possibly one of the most eco-friendly pastimes, right? And given all the work being done inside the industry. And I think that's, there's some really interesting like examples there that make people feel optimistic about being in this sector. And like Miles was saying, you know, some of the, the, the other progressive topics that this in the UK, you know, charities and mental health have got, that have stepped forward, it's, it's in the same theme. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of skewed towards talking about London, but London's again, you know, like it's, it's, it's not one of the most polluted cities in the world. It's already really progressive about things like clean air and the ultra emission zone. And, you know, the, it, it's, it, the city's built on a public transport infrastructure. It's got, but, you know, it hasn't got as many cars as many other places. And I think that's just part of the spirit in this country. So and that's why people are really engaged on this topic. But, you know, as, as we were saying, there's, there's loads more to do, but, but now we're all equipped with more information to help other people understand that. Brilliant. Well, sorry, Chris, if I can come in with one with one other thing, I'm going to say one one more um, statement that will get me into trouble. Um, you know, as, as an industry, uh, there are a lot of people who talk about, well, we're, we're moving away from physical to digital and that's better for the environment as well. And that's absolutely true. It is better for the environment. But the inter if the Internet was a country, it would be the fifth biggest polluter in the world as well. So. It's why we need to be doing more in in that space as well, and trying to get our download sizes down a bit, and working together and working together with the big digital stores on how we can do that via via installers. Um, because we can't, as I keep saying, we can't just stop with the things that we're already doing. We need to be doing more and space eight going carbon neutral i believe space ape are now below carbon neutral or, or planning to be below carbon neutral um which is fantastic to see you know they're, they're trying to offset um all of their players use as well which which is just brilliant we all need to be thinking in that direction we all need to be pushing each other to do more mm. um well, let's talk, let's talk about some advice. That's, that's yes, that's what we need to give. We need to give people some 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 help and guidance. So I've got to wrap things up. I've got two questions. But um, what advice can you give to sort of studios looking to 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 work out their environmental impacts and how they can address it? What 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 would you say to those studios? Yes, I can speak quite authentically here, as you know, I, I've very much been there quite recently, um, and. You know, we, we all kind of mention how, how daunting it can be, like there are loads of resources, it's, you know, you don't, you don't know which one to choose or which project perhaps that you might be um, choosing is whether that's, um, you know, good enough or how do I measure. Um, so, yeah, I would just say, start small, just get started, like don't let the kind of bigger picture, like overwhelm you. Um, there are lots of really simple like carbon calculator tools out there start there and then instantly you start to learn more and then you start to realize oh actually that doesn't recognize these things but actually this this calculator does so maybe I can combine these and I can have more data um yeah I would just say get started um, there's tons of resources out there um to help you start mapping out your own impact um and then yeah absolutely like join some of these groups, join Playing for the Planet, join the UK Sustainability Group. Um, there are other groups who are active on like game industry slacks and um, there's, you know, countless places where you can reach out to people who are passionate about this. Um, so I would just say, get a support network um, if you can, or as a company, like reach out to um, other experts in this. So like charities, organizations, um, to perhaps see if they might be able to help partner with you on some of these initiatives. That's how we started with Alba and it actually opened the doors to lots of other things. But even just starting that conversation saying, hey, I'm launching this game. I want to make a difference. How could we work together to, to push this message forward? And more often than not, these companies who are 
based on sustainability or kind of charities of, in these kinds of areas are definitely going to want to work with you. They definitely want to activate your client base. You're a games company. You've got a widespread, diverse reach to a active audience who are passionate about the environment. Um, so you're absolutely in a position where companies like this are going to want to work with you and help you. Um, so that's a great place to start. It definitely opened the doors to us. It led to playing for the planet. It led to um, you know our various initiatives with Alba um, and our journey just continues from there but yeah it takes starting and just kind of opening the doors and having those conversations to begin with. I think to, to, to add I agree with everything that James just said there but to add that to that as well um, if you have a really crazy idea don't think oh that's a really crazy idea that's not going to work try it reach out you know reach out to any of us here we've been talking about how collaborative this has been as an industry whether it be through playing for the planet through the, the green game guide we've met so many interesting people from around the world um so there's a lot of experience in the industry but when we don't have the experience we do exactly what jane has said which is we reach out to people who can help us and other organizations whether those be journeys that the film companies have, have been through in the TV production companies, whether it be the music industry side of things as well, who've, who've been trying various initiatives and just talking to people can really help. Um, so many organizations there who whose whole brief is to try and um, to try and reduce emissions to the point that we're um, that we're able to be sustainable and, and hopefully um, at least stop the damage that we're doing to the planet if, if you know, hopefully reversing it. Um, there's so many people out there and it's, it's kind of people's role in life rather than seen as a job by most of the people who work in the sector. So they really do want to help. Um, and, and yeah, just, stop thinking about it and start doing stuff about it basically start talking to people about how you can do stuff about it mm -hmm. michael do you have anything to add in terms of sort of advice whether it's advice on on things studios can do but or, or even stuff that you've heard in today's panel that you think people should take away I think I mean I'm just reiterating what Miles and Jane said about you know talking to your colleagues about it because that's how you know some of our stuff internally came about because our, our COO here is really progressive on this stuff and then you know it's it, that is that is clearly when we've spoken to other studios been the thing that's opened the door for them so that's it's, it's it's about communication but it's also about being the one to say internally I oh, can we talk about this because I don't know if we do anything about it or I've read this and what does what's our policy on this so you know it's 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 it, it's easy to say it's not always easy to do because you end up might being that person that um that takes over the responsibility for that by just raising the raising the problem but mm. it's it's so important and it, and it is urgent like Miles was saying earlier and you know it's really easy to think that because so much of the so much of the stuff that the impact they get the games industry has feels like it happens downstream like you think oh, it happens with players it happens with energy devices happens elsewhere and therefore you're not responsible but you're better but everyone individually is so that's why it's about you know it's as much about trying to take on some responsibility for it yourself yeah i think um i mean echo what everybody else has said definitely agree with with all of that i think uh, another great group to get involved in is the Climate SIG. Um, it's an IGDA group, and especially if you are uh, an indie developer or you know you're even somebody who's making games by themselves and in, in your room, etc. Um, just like fantastic group of people who are super passionate about this stuff and really, really willing to help. And if you're not quite uh, ready to you know to join something like the Alliance, that's like the super starting point. And I think uh, like within studios as well, like it's great like others have said, just to start the conversation, because what we found as well is, um, you know, like within Space Ape, the more that we talked about it, the more other people got um, interested in it and engaged in it and excited about it and uh, planning, you know, um, like company uh, events and things that have to do with uh, green initiatives rather than something else. So, or the way that we um, order all of our products, uh, for example, you know, like the shopping that we do for the studio's kitchen, like all of that has changed or the products that we use in the bathroom, like all of that has changed. So it can be little things that like get people onto that ladder. And then as you, yeah, as you learn more, you do more. Um, and then, yeah, I think like everyone else has said, like just start somewhere, 
there's so many people out here now to, to help on the journey. And I think we're in such like a, a privileged position within the industry because like this industry does imagination well and problem solving well. And so like, why not this industry to try to take on this giant problem? It's like, I think we could be the ones to, you know, to really crack it because we have all of these super creative, imaginative people who can come at it in new ways, new directions, form interesting partnerships, uh, like Jane said as well with, with NGOs or, you know, outside of our industry as well and just like merge those different spaces to find really, really creative solutions. So I'm super excited about that. I think the sky's the limit. Wow. Amazing. Well, thank you. Uh, we're out of time, unfortunately. I think I could happily talk about this for a long time, but thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Miles. Thank you, Jane. And thank you, Michael. Um, and um, the uh, uh, that's, you know, all the information um, from this session, actually all the sessions that we're running this week, but this session in particular is available to rewatch or re-download as a podcast. If you want to listen to it as a podcast and you can even visit Games and Shop Biz from this Friday, which is the 17th, to read our write-up of the session as well, um, as well as other sessions. So um, do check out that if you want to hear some of the advice again or, or reread it and, and, and find where you need to go and, and some of the things you can do. Um, and of course, please do tune in at 4 p.m. on Thursday, September 16th to discover the winners of the UK Games Job is Best Places to Work Awards 2021. We do have a environmental award in part of that um, uh, uh, where uh, we award a company for their excellent work in this area. Um, but that's it from us. Um, and we'll, but, but hopefully we'll see you later in the week. Thank you for watching.